Okay, so hot on the heels of the Gemini 3 Pro release this week, we now have a new release, which is Nano Banana Pro. And the whole reason why this had to wait was because this basically has Gemini 3 Pro built in. And it really leverages Gemini 3 Pro's state-of-the-art reasoning, world knowledge, and sort of ability to put together these complex compositions and to create really good images. So one of the things that really sets this apart is its ability to ground not only on images that you put in if you want to do editing. So this model can both generate images from scratch or you can put in an image and it can edit that to create a new image. So it can either ground on images, but it can also ground on Google search. So as I'll show you when we go through the examples, this is really one of the cool features of this is that you can get the model to look up things via search and then use that knowledge to actually create an image. So I think the quickest way to actually check these out is just to jump into some examples and I'll show you what this model can actually do. Okay, so when you come into AI Studio and you wanna try out Nano Banana Pro, you'll see that they've got some examples and stuff in here, but you can also see that you've got a few sort of key settings. So we can now set the aspect ratio that we want to have in here. Now, if it's auto, you can set it through your prompt it, or you can just leave it up to the actual model itself to basically decide. And then we've got different resolutions here. Not all of these bigger resolutions are actually upscaled versions of the image, but it allows you to get a full size 4K image, etc., going through this. So jumping in just to show you some sort of image stuff, this actually works well as not just an image editor, but also an image generator. So you can start out from nothing and generate images, or you can basically start with an image and then edit that image. In this case, I basically got a unremarkable, unintentional iPhone shot, a selfie of a caveman running with a T-Rex behind him. So this is the final image. But if we come in here and look at what actually is going on, this shows you a little bit about how Nano Banana Pro works or how this is working with the Gemini 3 version of this. So what it will do is it will envision the scene and then from that, it will start to develop a concept, right? This is just the sort of thinking. Obviously we don't have access to the raw thoughts. This is a summary of those raw thoughts out. And then it will create an image. Once it's created the image, there's actually this sort of self-analysis going on here of where it will analyze the user's requirements based on this image to see, okay, when it examines this photo, does it actually conform to everything? So this is the sort of key thing that you've got going on here is this loop of where it will use reasoning to work out what image to make but also it will use the reasoning then to check that image and see if it actually is the right thing. All right, so we've got that image. Now, one of the cool things that you can do with this is you can put in one image and get it to imagine what it would look like from a different perspective, from a different side, different angle, that kind of thing. So you can see here, I've just asked that create a photo from the top looking down at the man and the T-Rex. And you can see, sure enough, now it's created something quite different, but it makes sense that, okay, this would have been this kind of scene, even down to often really small things like the rocks, you will see that it tries to stay consistent with what it's doing. So in there, we can look in there, we can see that, okay, it's basically working out the top down angle here. Now, here's the one that I think is really interesting. It shows you the power of reasoning. Now I've asked it, just make a photo of the likely outcome here. Now, if you look at this, the T-Rex is pretty close to our man. When we look at the top-down shot, it looks perhaps the T-Rex is getting even closer. So what's the likely outcome? Probably something that's not going to be great for the man in this case. And you can see that it will basically do the reasoning on that to work out what is going on here. Now, this one I had to generate a couple of times because often what it will, would do in something like this is you may get a blocked generation or something like that. 
If you do get block generations, often what you can do is just come into the thoughts and actually see what the generation was before it got blocked from the final output. All right, next up, I want to show you using this concept of grounding. So one of the things is we can come down and we can turn on grounding with Google search. And now when we actually do a generation, it has the ability to go off, do some searches, find out information, bring that back and use that in the actual generation. And you can see in this case, I've asked it to make some images of this. It doesn't get it a hundred percent, right? It actually puts this side bit over on the left. If we look at it, you can see this and it's made it a bit bigger. The insides, it actually gets pretty accurate from this. And even the look at night and stuff like that, it can do that. From here, you can see that if we wanted to, we can actually format the image by passing in the aspect ratio, or we can actually set it over there. Now, another nice thing is that we can get it to imagine from what it's got as a representation here, we want it to actually do something. In this case, we want a blueprint that describes this building. And we can see, sure enough, it will go through and it will work out, okay, what it needs to do for the blueprint. It will create the blueprint and then give us the output. And you can see that the output is pretty nice in here. The interesting thing is it's got the 16 by nine written on the blueprint, which is funny. But we can see that, okay, sure enough, we've got some stuff. Now, partly because of its grounding, it actually knows that there's a crypt and stuff in there as well, perhaps. So that's something that you'll often see is that when you enable grounding, you're able to get more general knowledge about what it's actually generating the image about. I can then ask it, okay, if Leonardo da Vinci had designed this, what would be different? You can see, okay. It comes up with something now much more in the style of one of the Da Vinci notebooks. I'm not sure how consistent this is with these huge gears and stuff like that. And with the idea here of the double helix staircase going on, but it does have the writing being back to front, like Leonardo had in his notebooks, etc. Another example of the grounding, which I thought was really good was I was talking to someone who was in Brooklyn and they were outside at the time. And so I asked them, okay, roughly, where are you? They gave me a sort of rough area and I asked it to with grounding on to make me a picture of the weather right now in that area. And you'll see, if we look at the thoughts in here, we can see that it says, okay, I've begun my investigation by leveraging Google search to pinpoint the prevailing weather conditions. This is the area. This is my initial step to accurately depict the setting and I'm still searching for the location. It goes through and then puts this together. And when I sent the picture to the person, they said, it's actually, they even sent me a picture back of what the real conditions were. And it was kind of interesting. Clearly they weren't an exact match, but they were very similar, right? So it is kind of amazing. It's not actually from what I can understand going out and finding an image or a live image of what is there. It's basically just getting the weather conditions for a particular place, knowing what that place looks like, and then reproducing that place with those weather conditions. And you can also see here that we can leverage this built-in knowledge of where I've basically asked it to make me a wall of graffiti in Melbourne with an ad for Eugene's coffee house in it. If we look at this, it puts a tram in the background and it makes a lane, which is kind of realistic for the lanes that you would see graffiti on in there. Now it seems like this is a mirror over here reflecting this. You can see here's the actual ad. We can manipulate that ad pretty easily. We can put in a celebrity, have George Clooney as part of the ad. Suddenly now our previous character has gone. We've now got George Clooney in there. And one of the cool things is that because this has gotten so much better at text, I won't say that it's perfect, but it's gotten very good at being able to render text. One of the cool things is not only can you render out this text like this, we can even ask it, okay, show me the ad front on. So there's our ad front on, and we can even ask it things like, okay, translate that text into Thai and render it. And you can see now it's basically just replicating the same ad where it's got Eugene's coffee house written in Thai. 
it's repeating the coffee house bit. So actually, technically, the English version just had Eugene's across the top. So this one's changed it a little bit, but it's actually got the sort of spelling. And one of the really interesting things is that if you know anything about Thailand is that the years there are offset. And so here we've got established 2023 and they've actually converted that to the Thai years, which accurately is 2566. That's showing you th this sort of depth of knowledge in the model itself that it's using to be able to leverage out for image generation in here. All right, next up, the things you can do are things like composition. So you can see here, I've got an image with some of my cats. If I want to try and put them all together on that bed, I can basically just say it, right? Take the picture of three cats on the bed, add in the two other cats from the second image. Each cat should have its own space. And you can see, sure enough, it's able to then render out the five cats. So this kind of composition of being able to put things together in an image is really cool. And some of the things that you can do with this is that you can just have a image, sort of an image sheet with lots of different accessories and then get it, the model to actually render them together into something, whether that's fashion accessories for a person, whether it's a look for a room, that kind of thing. There's a really nice example that I've played with a little bit in here that originally is just this picture of the girl. And what you can basically do is a simple prompt for basically deconstructing this into sort of, I guess, a mood board or a fashion board in here. And you can see, sure enough, it keeps that picture of the girl, but we've now got the red beret. We've got her tweed jacket. We've got the different accessories in there. And we can then basically ask it to change some of those accessories. So I've asked it to change the jacket and make the beret pink. And you can see now it's updated the image in there. And then I can even do things like, okay, make a version of the complete look inside a photo studio, unremarkable, taken with an iPhone 15. And you can see, sure enough, we've got that look with the leather jacket, with the pink beret in the photo studio, just taken with a simple iPhone in here. Lastly, just two more to show you is that, okay, let's say I've got this blog post where they've got some nice diagrams in here explaining stuff. I didn't really get down to this one, but the first three diagrams, I want it to basically put this together in some kind of fancy way. So I can just put those diagrams in there and I can say, okay, create illustrated visual explainer set of images of wings, ailerons, and flaps on planes using these three images as a guide. And you can see, sure enough, it's able to then put something like this together where it's taken those images and it's being able to understand what actually is going on here. That, okay, this wing is gonna give it lift. The original images, this was totally separate from this. And then once we've got what we want, we can actually stylize it pretty simply where I could just say, make it look more high tech, you can see this, it will go through and work out, okay, what does high tech mean to it? In this case, it means glowing blue with cyan lines. And sure enough, it comes out with this nice high tech diagram based on this. So this is for me, one of the really cool things. I'll show you another example of this, of when I was making the Kimi K2 thinking video, I was looking at different ways to try and show some of the timeline of what that company had done. And this one I thought was pretty cool was that I could just literally come in here and use the sort of Gemini three, we've got grounding search on, and I can say, make me a timeline of all the moonshot.ai releases, including Kimi K2 thinking. And you can see that it goes off and it basically puts together First, before it even does anything with an image, what are those releases? So it's got the March 23 company founded, the different things that they've released along the way. And then we've got citations and stuff like that, just like we normally would have if we were using Gemini 3 with grounding search, etc. We can see the different searches that we got. And then I can just tell it, okay, make this an infographic. And now it basically just says, okay, I'm going to take all this stuff and I'm going to do it as a sort of node thing. 
And you can see here that it's started to put this together. Now at the time I couldn't actually show this publicly, but I could have taken this and then fleshed it out more and asked it, okay, perhaps we don't want to show all of those things. We only want to show certain ones, perhaps do a little bit of checking to make sure which ones are right, which ones are not. But you can see very quickly, we can go from just an idea of that we want a timeline into a full-fledged infographic that you can use for doing this sort of thing. So as you can see here, that really this new Nano Banana Pro or as it's technically called Gemini 3 Pro image model is really kind of amazing at what it can do. It's really like the original Nano Banana, but on steroids. My guess is that we're going to see a lot of creative uses of how people use this. I've certainly been playing around with it, combining it with making images for this and getting it to make first frame, last frame images, and then put it into things like VO to be able to render out a full video. But my guess is that you could even use this to create a full set of storyboards for a TV show, for a movie, etc. Now, it's not going to be cheap to actually do something like that. And to get started with the Nano Banana Pro, you're going to need a paid key to actually use this model. As far as I know, it's currently not available for you to use this for free, but that may change between now and when the model actually launches. But anyway, if you are interested in any kind of image generation, definitely check out this model, have a play with it for your particular use case. I'm really blown away by this. And my guess is that there are going to be people out there who are a lot more creative than I am that actually be able to work out whole different ways to actually use this. So let me know in the comments if you've got any really good prompts. I certainly would love to see them and tr try them out myself to see what people can actually generate with this. And I think many people would be interested to see a really good collection of ways to prompt this model to get it to do things that we haven't even thought about yet. So let me know in the comments what you think. As always, if you found the video interesting, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.